Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats. Uh, in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus and limits, and specifically focusing on epsilon delta proofs. Uh, what we're going to, to do using an epsilon delta argument is to show that the limit of this rational function, x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over 3x plus 5, it's an insoluble rational function, uh, which means that when you factor, when we factor the, 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 the numerator, uh, there's, there's no commonality between the numerator, its factors, and the denominator. Uh, that the limit of this particular rational function as x tends to 4 is in fact equal to 5 17 This is probably a little bit messy, this one, this particular proof, uh, but let's just maybe just hammer through it and let's just have a bit of tenacity to stay along with the algebra that's associated with it. Uh, but let's just recall what we need to show. So recall, recall, okay, what we need to show is that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, that there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all x, for each and every x satisfying the condition, satisfying the condition uh, that the absolute value of x minus a is greater than zero, is less than delta, that from this particular fact, and for the x to satisfy this particular condition, that we can imply from this uh, that f of x minus l is in fact less than epsilon. So in this particular case, so in this case, what we need to show is that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, that there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for each and every x satisfying, let's just say sat, uh, satisfying the condition that zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a. So where is the limit tending to? The limit is tending to four. So in this case, uh, a is four. So x minus four is less than delta. That from that fact that we can imply that this rational function, this x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over 3x plus 5 minus its limit, minus 5 over 17, is in fact less than epsilon. So there's a bit of work to do here, but we'll be able to get through this yeah, if you have the tenacity to stay along uh, with this particular journey. So we have an implication. Uh, the premise of the implication is over here. So here's the premise. And here's the conclusion of the implication over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a depth, a delta that allows this, that allows this uh, conclusion to be true, or that allows us to infer uh, this particular conclusion. So let's just concentrate on the conclusion. Let's see if we reduce this a uh, very, very uh, crazy looking, this crazy looking function. Let's say, can we reduce this crazy looking function down into something that looks like this? And we actually can with a little bit of algebra. Okay? So in anticipation, in anticipation. Okay. Of finding, of finding, an appropriate, appropriate delta. Okay, delta. Okay, let's consider, let's consider, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So a bit of work to do here. So let's just take this conclusion. Uh, that is, that is, we need to consider x squared minus three x plus one all over three x plus five, the absolute value of that minus five seventeenths uh, is less than less than epsilon. So a little bit of work to do, okay, and I'm just gonna really just jump ahead. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to we're just going to minimize uh, the the parameter here inside this absolute value here. Okay. Uh, so the common the common denominator is going to be uh, 17 times 3x plus 5. And actually when I multiply that out what I get is this unfair this implies that common denominator now is 3 times 17, which is going to be 51x. 5 times 17 is going to be 85. So 51x times 85. Uh, so 3x plus 5 into 17 times, it goes 17 times. And then I'm going to have 17 times the numerator. And then the 17 goes into this 3x plus 5 times. So then I'm going to have minus 5 times the 3x plus 5. And when, when we work that out, okay, we do the little bit of if we do the little bit of work on that particular on that particular uh, that particular fact here, uh, what we end up with, if I'm not mistaken, and th then I factor. Let's just just factor the quadratic as well. Okay, what I end up with is x minus four times seventeen x plus two. Okay, and it's the absolute value of all of this thing here, and needs to be less than epsilon. 
So when you just when we reduce this down into a single into a, in, into a single uh, quotient, uh, what we end up with is something like this. So it'll initially be a quadratic, and when we factor the quadratic, we'll end up with something like this here. So what is this telling us? This is telling us. So from this, we're going to imply. Uh, so the absolute value of a quotient is the same as the absolute value of the numerator divided by the absolute value of the denominator. And then the absolute value of a product is the same as the product of the individual absolute value. So this is actually going to reduce down to the absolute value of x minus 4 times the absolute value of 17x plus 2 all over the absolute value of 51x plus 85. Now these numbers are, these numbers are horrible. It needs to be less than, needs to be less than epsilon. Uh, which would tell us, don't forget, we're trying to reduce the conclusion down into something that looks like this. And we sort of have got the, the premise here. There's the x minus 4. But we have a bit of baggage. We have this particular fraction here in terms of two absolute values uh, that are dependent on x. So what I'd like to do next is this, and this is a usual attack strategy, yeah, is 